Due to high lumber prices and contractors aren't going to be ordering five or six extra boards just so they can get a few straight boards for their stair stringers. And this wasn't a problem when I first started out. If I had some bad boards, I would just simply flip them off of the pile. I wouldn't use them. But that's not the case today. So how do we deal with using crowned lumber to cut straight stair stringers? And I think the best suggestion I could give you would be to snap a line on the most convenient part of the board to create a straight line. And then use the circular saw to cut a straight line or the straightest line you possibly can. Or use this line to lay out your stair stringers. Then you can either discard the piece that you cut or attach it to the other side. And yes, this works. I'm not saying the structural engineer is going to like it. But if all you ordered was three pieces of lumber and you don't have a straight one in the bunch, then you can go ahead and lay out the stair stringer using the straight edge. Then we can go ahead and cut our stair stringer pattern and then use that pattern in the most creative way we possibly can by setting it on top of the other lumber that isn't straight and trying to position it into place to create the strongest air stringers we possibly can. And some of you are probably wondering, well, what am I going to do here? Well, if I have something like this, or possibly something like this, I might just leave it, depending on what I'm using for my risers and my treads. For example, if I'm using half inch plywood for my risers, I'm probably going to want to cut a piece and attach it to the stringer. However, if I'm using two by eights, for the risers, an inch and an eighth plywood for the treads, I might not need to. So again, just simply position the lumber in whatever way you think it's going to provide you with the most strength for your project. Then simply grab your pencil and mark along the sides of the pattern until you have a nice stair stringer that will create a straight upper section of the stairway and hope you don't need to drywall the bottom of it. And hopefully that makes sense. Now next up, let's take a look at a few reasons why old growth lumber is better than the new lumber that we're using today. So I thought I would go ahead and do all of my viewers a favor and try to figure out what the compressive strength is for the old growth, what it is for the new growth, and what's actually required by the engineers who created the span charts for rafters and floor framing. And according to them, the minimum compression PSI rating for a 16 foot long floor joist is going to be 237 PSI. And for a longer floor joist, like a 24 foot long floor joist, it's going to be 356 PSI. So the minimum compression rating will vary depending upon the length of the lumber. And now that we got that out of the way, let's go ahead and throw out some more numbers. The new growth number, according to one survey that was done by a university, suggested that old growth Douglas fir, that probably makes a big difference also, was tested with a 567 PSI rating. The new lumber at a 464 PSI rating. And if the minimum I need for a 24 foot floor joist is only 356 PSI, then I don't think it's really going to make that big of a difference whether I use old growth or new growth lumber. Now keep in mind that I've seen a lot of things over the years. And one of those is when someone else is trying to push someone else's agenda and make you believe something that might not be a big deal in the first place. So until these new homes start falling down because of the compression strength of the joist and the roof rafters, then I won't worry about using old Douglas fir lumber or reclaiming used lumber from an old house. And it's often harder to cut, and I can't tell you how many times you're going to split that lumber when you go to drive a toenail into it. And maybe that is because the compression strength is higher on the older lumber. And I really didn't spend a lot of time researching this. If you have other information, feel free to leave it in the comment area. And if I get enough of it, I will definitely make a follow-up video. And thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, let us know by hitting the thumbs up button or letting us know in the comment area.